Please unmute, brothers. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be exalted most high. It's a great pleasure and great privilege to come before the mercy seat of our beloved Lord. And it is a, the Lord has been so gracious unto us that the Lord has gathered us today evening before the throne of grace. And he is very happy with us 
and singing our rest. That's what we were hearing. Uh, that so in reciprocation, we were singing unto the Lord and singing with that with Hazel that we worship you. Teri aradhana kare. This very uh, pleasant and very joyful song. I was enjoying it. I am so happy to see all the brethren here and I would like to request all to maximum to have your um, videos to be on in own mode so that it would be much better for me to interact and to have a active participation and I would like to see the faces of my brethren, beloved brethren purchased by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Earlier, last time we were meditating upon from 1st John chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. I will read that again and we will continue with verses 3 and 4. Epistle 1st John chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 which we meditated last time it is that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life verse 2 for the life of manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us these two verses we meditated last time is lord is so gracious unto us that we shall uh, again continue with verses 3 and 4. Let me read it first for you. Verses 3, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that also, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 4, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. I entrust myself and commit myself to the Lord's hand and I request all of you to keep on praying while the word of the Lord is preached and let the Lord uh, bless it and uh, give it unto us so that we, our spiritual requirements may be met and we'll, our joy may be full in the Lord. In verses 3, and 3 and 4, we are seeing that that which we have seen and have heard declare be unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. So, the verses 3, I want to put it into three points. The first point is that ye may have fellowship. Verses 3, I am breaking it into three. One first part is ye may have fellowship. And the second part of the verse 3, I, I name it as uh, the true fellowship with the Father. Second point I want to stress is uh, that from the same verse, that is the true fellowship with the Father. And again, breaking to the three, third point from the same verse 3, that is the with his fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ. Such a wonderful power packed verse it is. And this is the full message of gospel also that each and every creature of humankind is ought to know who is God and to come into the fellowship of God no other way. It is duty bound of each and every mankind to come and to inquire about who is the God who has created me and what the God has done unto me and what reconciliation God has done and through whom he has reconciled me and what happened to my sins and otherwise what should I do to get rid of all my sins to have a fellowship with God. So this verse is full of gospel message if we study and I request those who are not in fellowship with God and those who are not born again and have the faith in Lord Jesus Christ, this is the golden chance to know who is God. Now, coming to the first portion of verse 3, 
that is he may have fellowship with us that apostle john is saying see this epistle i am writing is all about fellowship fellowship means love of god fellowship and love goes together if there is no love there is no fellowship if there is no fellowship there is no love i uh, and the apostle is saying what i mentioned whether it is fellowship of love or love everything is about god word and so here we, the apostle is saying want to say the first and main point of my this epistle is all about a father a son and his children oh what a wonderful amazing epistle this apostle is the apostle of love john is saying i am writing this epistle that you should know there is a fellowship all together in father son and holy spirit triuning god in heaven that is manifested upon the earth as instituting as family as we father uh, mother and children just like that we should understand this family is instituted by god only to know to make and acknowledge the uh, mankind to know that there is a triunion father son and holy spirit in true fellowship and love from there it flows and begins the love and fellowship so why we people are staying in home as father mother and children the only one reason is because god has instituted that every creature of mankind should know that a triunion god is the father son and holy spirit in true fellowship and love that should be manifested upon the world created by him by instituting family that's why we are having marriages and children so now here we come to fellowship fellowship means uh, uh, one one of my early fathers were preaching evangelist was preaching fellowship means uh, all the persons together in a ship fellows in a ship sharing everything as a from that that explanation correct good but more more than that little more deeper if we go what apostle here means is fellowship means two or more individuals or two or more persons sharing all the things as if a one person i think you are getting me the fellowship means two or more individuals or two or more persons or a group of persons sharing everything as a common thing and as if a single person sharing everything as if a single person so that is what the lord actually wanted the lord says i want fellowship with the mankind whom i have created that means the main attributes of god he want to share it a common thing with the mankind whom he has created the main three l is the main three attributes of god the first one the lord is light that we will see later on from verses 5 onwards we'll see the first l three l you have to remember uh, the most important uh, attributes of god that is manifested to the world even unto us the three l one is the first one is light lord is like he wanted to share that light and that light came to the world and that light he want everybody to be in that light and share his glory his light he wanted to share his light and that's why he sent his light the lord jesus christ that we should find glory in him and we should be the part and parcel of the glory of the lord and we have to do away with the darkness and sin and to be the uh, the part of god's glory and we will be and of course we will share and we will be with the glory of the lord so the first l is light and the second l comes it is the uh, love the love of the lord so the lord uh, his second uh, is love lord god says i am love 
I'm light, I'm love. I can give anything and everything to have, to impart with you, oh man, I taking the passion of a man. I myself emptied myself in my love. I give everything for you. That is what we see on the cross that the Lord is love. He gave everything, everything he could give, nothing is left back. See, Lord is so good that he gave uh, his light and his love and uh, his life. So three L I mentioned. His love, his life, first of all, Jesus Christ. And his love, again, Jesus Christ. And his life, again, Jesus Christ. So what I, I, I reiterate a, 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 once more, these three attributes, these three qualities of God that he is like always from time immemorial. There is no beginning for the Lord and the light in him and the love in him and the life in him. I think it's clear. The love of the light of God, the love of God and the life of God, it is there in him in himself. Nobody has created light or life or love in God. Nobody inputted these three in God. It was there in himself. The light was there in himself. He is, is omnipotent God and he has no beginning and he is no end. Just like that, these three things has no beginning and no end in God. Nobody has inputted into that all these things to God. And the Lord God wants these three good qualities to be imparted, to be shared commonly with man. That is the fellowship. So I think you are enjoying this, this qualities with the Lord has imparted with us. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. The very God became very man. That is that he wanted to share. That is the real fellowship. That is the explanation of fellowship. Fellowship means the uh, two or more individuals sharing the, uh, all the things in common as a single person. But here, the Lord, whatever qualities he wanted, he shared, giving his own, delivering his own son on the the, the real heart of the Lord is open. It is witnessed before us that he really wanted the fellowship of man. For that sake, he is ready to spare anything and everything in heaven. That is his precious son who was sitting in the bosom of the Father. Since the God wanted fellowship with us, he spared his son on the cross and never gave answer to that cry on the cross by the Lord Jesus Christ. Eli, Eli, Lama, Shabbatani. He wanted us to bring to the fellowship the Father. Now the second point of verse 3 is the true fellowship with the Father. So the Father had, Father, God had, the Father, his Father is saying this is true fellowship with the Father. So everybody should understand there is a father and this father want to bring all the man into the fellowship of his soul. We should be his soul. Uh, that's why purchased for his soul, gave everything for to be for be his soul. So here, here Apostle is saying, oh, my children of God, oh, my brethren, what I'm preaching today is, we are in fellowship with the Almighty Father God who is sitting in holy heaven. Oh, what a great privilege. We, that second point, it touches my heart. If we are saying this to any orphan who is adopted, and if we say, oh, you are adopted to the fellowship of a great man, then that often will say, 
I am not worthy for that. So here the Apostle John is saying, Oh man, you are brought to the fellowship of Father the Godhead. What it means? It's a miracle. Such a wretch like us has now become to the fellowship of truth and that too, true fellowship with the Father. Father the Godhead. So we are so uh, established and acknowledged and confirmed and so basically it is so sure, 101% sure, Apostle is saying, we are now in the true fellowship of Father the Godhead. Oh, what a great message it is. Are we experiencing the love of our Father, crying, Abba, Father? Uh, I think we should cry calling Father, Abba, Father, Daddy, every day, morning and evening. The exact word, Abba, Father, we should cry. Because here, the, uh, in this verse, Apostle says, we have brought to the true fellowship and our fellowship is true with Father. Uh, First John, in the same epistle, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, it's so clear. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. What does it mean? Fellowship means it's giving and taking. Then only fellowship, that cycle will be completed. So it's it, from God's part, he gave his son. Now it's reciprocate in reciprocation. If that cycle of fellowship should be completed and the God demands, Father demands this fellowship because his part is completed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Even today morning and evening, his grace is upon us. It is even completed today. The Lord is completing his duties of fellowship every day. And his eyes is upon us. And he, was, he has given his archangels for our safety. And he has given everything for, for our nourishment and nourishment, for spiritual and for all the bodily requirements. And he, the Lord Father, is doing all his duties and completed the fellowship and everything. And now the Lord God demands back in reciprocation. Now it's our duty. What's our duty? We ought to lay down our lives. Uh, it's a challenging message, Father Apostle is saying. Uh, I do not know how to explain it. I have no right to explain it because I have not gone to so much extent. <laughs> now in reciprocation, the Lord is demanding a fellowship back even laying down my life, your life. And it is, uh, it is uh, our duty also, since we have received the same, his life for our deliverance, for our redemption, it is duty bound to reciprocate, to give our life instead of that. And to coming to the third point of the same verse, and this fellowship, which is with the Father, the third point is with His Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, this is the really an uh, encouraging to hear that Jesus is Christ and Jesus is the Son of the Father. So Jesus is given two main exhortation, two main uh, position. That is, Jesus is not simply Jesus. This, uh, Apostle is saying, we are having fellowship with Jesus who died for our sins and rose again on the third day, resurrected and gone back to heaven advocating for us and preparing mansions for us and coming back to gather us. All this is true. But we think and say always, Jesus, Jesus is known. Apostle is saying, don't say Jesus alone. He's not alone, Jesus. Jesus is just the name 
given, while he was upon there, while he was born for us, while he emptied himself and became a man. So each and everyone who has not accepted Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior should understand they will perish if they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because he took uh, uh, the fashion of a man came down, the very God became man and bore your sins on his shoulder and died on the cross to redeem you, pay the debt of your sins. So this Jesus is not a simply a single Jesus alone to be named. His name is Son of God and his name is Christ. So when you say Jesus, that is saying it's not respecting him. If we respect the Lord, we cannot say Jesus alone. In the New Testament, uh, after Acts, you can go through all the epistles. Nowhere in, in uh, apostles is simply saying Jesus. You can verify. I have verified. In uh, After this Gospels and after this uh, Acts, while you go through all the epistles to Revelation, never is said Jesus, 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 no. Yeah, earlier in gospel it is said, in Acts also you may see, but after that, no, you can see simply the name of Jesus. It's always with before Jesus, there may be Son of God, or Christ, or Jesus Christ, or Lord Jesus. There is always a respectful, revering word attached to his name. And we have no right to diminish his glory and simply say, Jesus, it is wrong. And let me go to the action to say that if we simply say Jesus, we are not accepting him as a Lord, but simply Jesus. So now he here he says, this Jesus is Christ, he is the Son of God. To him we have come to the fruition. Let me read some verses. Titus. Uh, chapter 2, verse 13. There it is. We all know that verse. Um, I don't know whether anybody can help me in reading. It would be better if somebody is helping me because uh, it's very difficult for me to turn the, all these pages. Hello? Um, John, to read it, please. Yes, uh, uh, John, to read Titus. Yeah, Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Please help me because turning the pages, then again going to the message, I think. While we wait for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Great God and Savior Jesus Christ, blessed book. How many words are there given before and after the name? Blessed hope, great go, great God, Jesus Christ. Three words attached to the word Jesus. Have we got any right to say simply Jesus? Ensure that we will never repeat it. And as for me, I consider it as a sin to call the Lord simply Jesus. He is not simply Jesus. We have come to the fellowship of the blessed hope. Ah, he is the hope. No God has given hope except Jesus Christ, our Lord, the true great God. In him only is hope for the whole mankind. And he's going to come again to gather us who has believed in him. And he's great God. Should understand. He's not simply God. He's great God. And there is only God. If ever some, somebody says there is some other gods, then the apostle says he's great God. Above him there is nothing. No God is above him. That is what the hymn writer says. He is above all. He is above all. To with him we have come to the fellowship. So all those who have not come to the fellowship of this great God, blessed hope, 
Jesus Christ, Messiah, the Redeemer. He is the only hope for a sinner. Only hope is this blessed Redeemer, blessed hope, great God, only God, Jesus Christ. Let me come to verse 4. Um, epistle, John 1st Epistle, chapter 1, verse 4. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Uh, I want to uh, conclude that the word, hearing of the word of God and accepting it to our hearts and making to work it with our faith in our daily livelihood will make our joy full. Nobody can take away the joy which the Holy Spirit through the word in the indwelling of Father and the Son in our spirit, the joy will be full. Nobody can take it away from us because we are having the fellowship with the true Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. And here verse 4, it says, And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Um, even the, since the time is going so far fast, uh, I want to capture the verse 4, the first portion I want to say like this, these things I write unto you. Beloved brethren, whatever I have heard from my Lord, whatever I have seen, handled, touched, experienced, laid on his bosom, and I have been with him just like we were just like one person. And I have such a tremendous fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I cannot help writing all these things to you. So dear brethren, uh, whatever we know about the Lord, just share it. Just share it with our colleagues, with our co-workers, with our neighbors, with our friends. Whatever we know regarding our Lord, just write it, just declare it, just express it. Let everybody know our beloved Savior is such a great God who wants to request the fellowship of each and every sinner to come to his side. So he said, these things we write unto you. Um, everybody is putting status in uh, WhatsApp. And uh, uh, I don't want to boast myself. Uh, I want to put status every day. So I was thinking, what should I put status every day? I was thinking, Lord, uh, everybody is putting status in, uh, in their mobile. What should I put every day? Then um, uh, you know, uh, the spirit of the Lord said, see, you like my word. You enjoy my word. Simple Peter, put it every day. Yeah. Then I decided such a beautiful thing. I will write every day a verse as my status. Whoever want to see my status, it should be my Lord. It should be the word of the Lord. I will write for the Lord. I will come to the second portion. Uh, that portion is not, the apostle has not written here. I'm putting a bracket between uh, that uh, that uh, verse 4 and these things I write and the second part is actually we unto you that your joy may be full but in between that I put uh, a portion that is whatever I read that apostle has written and you are getting me a, a second point I'm inserting in verse 4 whatever apostles has written in their epistles whether it is john whether it is paul whether it is peter whether it's jacob whether it is jude whatever apostles and the gospels and the acts and the revelation and whatever is written and given to my hand i will read it i will meditate it and i will declare it and i will write it I said four things. That is, whatever the Lord has written through his servants, apostles, 
I will make it a point to compulsorily read it. Whatever may excuses may come in my daily life, I will make it a point that I will compulsorily read it personally and with my family, individually and with my family. I will read it morning and evening. Whatever is written, I will read it. And the second thing, I will meditate it. Not simply read and close the Bible, but I will meditate it. I mean, I will put it into practice the very same day what I have read. If I have read God is love, that verse today, I will make it a point. I will meditate it and I will put it in practice that this very day in my daily life. And the third thing, well, I will meditate it, I will put it into practice, I will declare it and I will write about it. That is what I inserted in between. I am sorry that is not, Apostle uh, has not written it. That is from the depth of all my heart. I want to add from my emotions to the Lord that I will read from Genesis to Revelation. After completing Revelation, I will again start secret in my secret prayer and for meditating and writing notes. And I will share it and I will declare it and I will write it. And I will put the status every day regarding the word of the Lord, pure word, holy word, every day status I will put. Uh, I will come to the third point of verse 4, that is, your joy may be full. Actually, I wanted to elaborate on, uh, I will read it, meditate it, declare it, and write it and all. Just for uh, a reference sake, let me ask you to read Psalms 1, verse 2. Please. Psalms 1, verse 2. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. Thank you. It's such a lovely verse. Each and every day, it's better to memorize the same verse so that we will be urged to follow the rest of the word of the God and to meditate it and to enjoy in it. And the outcome and the result of all this fellowship and all this reading and all this meditating and all putting into practice. Now the apostle is summing up, saying what, what he is summing up goes for last part, that your joy may be full. If you have the fellowship with father, with his son and with this uh, word, his holy word, whatever we have written, you read it, meditate it, put it into practice, declare it, witness it, express it, write it, and then you will have joy. You will have the joy. Let me read simply. I, uh, Even though I want, wanted to uh, explain more about how to become the joy in fullness, not simply joy, Apostle is saying, the joy that is in fullness and that nobody can take away from us. Uh, that I wanted to explain, but I just want to read some uh, references um, because I think the time is uh, going to, uh, I want this time to conclude. John, um, Jude, Jude, verse 24. Jude, verse 24. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his holy glory, blameless and with great joy. Four things are there, it is said. See, four main things. A single verse is such a great a soothing, comforting words and assurance for each one of us. That verse itself is so soothing. See? The word of God is just like honey and honeycomb. It's so tasty and so true. 
and that will be fulfilled here it's saying he will keep you from falling first thing is in the sing in a single small words holy spirit is saying four things four assurances so sweet it is i it is true beloved my dear beloved brother and it is true with me it is true with you i am 58 years now and all these years it is true with me the lord is so true with me he has fulfilled all his promises and here there are four promises in a single word first one he will keep you from falling second thing he will present you faultless how how come that he loves us so much and forgives all our sins and again we urge us and we ensure us coming back to him without backsliding and with all power packed actions and fellowship with the lord to witness him and to enjoy his fellowship he will present faultless where the lord will not only keep us from without falling but at the end he will present us before the father for the bride as a faultless bride and we are the spectacular such a great ornamented decorated organ of that bride present faultless where is we are going to be presented we are going to be presented before the presence of glory you know we read about the shekina where in exodus we read the uh, lord said o oh moses you make an uh, ark with sitting wood and uh, cover it with gold and put a censer with full of uh, a pot with full of manna and that aaron's budded stick and uh, uh, that uh, table of 10 commandments you, these three you put in that ark and cover it with a golden throne of grace mercy seat there it said mercy seat i love both the phrases mercy seat and throne of grace and come the middle of mercy see i will speak unto my children of israel and the glory of the lord was between the cherubims of this mercy see and this is known as shekina and this shekina you know it goes from the holy stuff holy place up towards above the tabernacle and becomes as a pillar of shade for the entire family of israel while they journeyed the desert this a pillar a shade a shade of pillar cloud a cloud for a pillar shade nothing will harm them this shekina goes up from the holy stuff holy place and becomes a pillar of cloud for the whole israel only for israel huh? not for others and the same shekina during the night no enemy should come near it's a pillar of fire for the entire camp oh now the moses when he went inside the tabernacle that glory of the lord shone on his face and when he came out people couldn't could not look at his face because his skin of his face was shining see that very glorious face presence we are going to be presented see it's true no that lord's glory face moses did moses see really moses did see for god's face yeah of course that's why the skin of his face show was shown why because he saw the glory of the lord it's true beloved brethren this is true if moses has stood before the glory of the lord we are also going and taken and presented before the glory of the lord if this thing happened in exodus 
this is hap going to happen in our lives in near future in heaven just like Moses was presented before the Lord of glory we are going to be presented faultless without falling before the glory of the Lord and the fourth thing is with exceeding joy today oh, what a joy to have our blessed redeemer our bridegroom is will any bride have any any problem or any sickness or any sorrow when a bridegroom a new bridegroom she gets ask rebecca about that <laughs> see there there is joy 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 only oh what a great bridegroom we have what a glorious bride who gave his life for this bride such a great love he is uh, having in his heart he want to express in on our face standing before us he want to express the whole love he want to express with his glory and we are going to be the part really literally we are going to start before the glorious bridegroom and with exceeding joy and uh, let me read one more verses and let me close that's john's gospel chapter 16 verse 22 john's gospel chapter 16 verse 22. what does lord says from his own mouth we can hear what the lord said john's chapter john's gospel chapter 16 verse 22 verse 2 you said 22 2 2 22 and ye now therefore have sorrow but i will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you thank you it's so nice here again there is four things the lord we are hearing from the mouth of the lord right the, the lord himself said see but one thing the first point what the lord said is we have to make a note on it you will have sorrow while you are upon this earth even though i have given laid my life and redeemed you and have gave it i have paid the all the debts and i have forgiven all the sins everything is done for you but one thing is guaranteed for me for you that is you will have sorrow but that sorrow i will take away first thing that sorrows will be taken away second thing and you will see me again you will see me again. from the mouth of the lord the lord only saying it's not apostles it's the lord himself saying you will see me again oh. and the only thing i have never fulfilled which I have cherished. I want to see the face of the Lord. My Father, my Redeemer, my Blessed Who. The only thing remaining for me is to just to see my beloved bridegroom, his face. And you are and you are third thing, your heart shall rejoice. Fourth thing, and our joy no man taketh away. And we will be starting to enjoy the fellowship of Lord. And every minute we will be going to starting only. Because there is no there is no time limit in eternity. And time is taken away and no day and night. It seems just like always, just like beginning to enjoy. Beginning to enjoy. Next, next second also, beginning to enjoy. Why? Because there is no time there. Always enjoying in the glorious presence of the lord who gave his life for us crying daily daily lemas this lord we are having the matter with this lord who gave himself for us what the great god we should always urge ourselves to always have a blessed fellowship with this lord May the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be exalted 
Ebawol. Amin.